Hello guys. In this video, we will look at how to index database using SQLize. In videos on sorting and filtering, we used allowed sort by and allowed filter by fields to make sure users don't take the database. However, if you have a lot of rows in your table, and we're talking well, hundreds of thousands or millions, you need to index your fields. Obviously, you don't want to index all the fields in your table because indexing slows down table writes. Usually what you want to do is to identify how data is accessed in your application and index database accordingly. When deciding on in adding indexes, you should keep in mind that if you have a small data set, the database engine may choose not to even use indexes because the database can just load everything in memory. It is a good idea to introduce indexes later on in the lifetime of the application when the application starts to slow down and you know how users access data. In this tutorial, we will use allowed sort by and allowed filter by fields as the guidance, assuming those fields are frequently used in sorting and filtering. But before we start coding, let's talk theory. There are a lot of types of indexes, but the ones that are commonly used are simple or single column index. It is created based on only one table column. There is a composite, multi-column index it is created on two or more columns in the table unique uh, unique index used not only for performance but also for data integrity it can be a single column or a multi-column index and there is also implicit index it automatically created by the database server indexes are automatically created for primary key constraints and unique constraints now let's actually explain what constraints are so we have a clear distinction between indexes and constraints. Constraints are used to ensure consistency, accuracy, re reliability of the data in the table. Constraints can be specified when the table is created with a create table statement or after the table is created with a alter table statement. Constraints can be created for one or multiple columns. Commonly used constraints are primary key, this is a combination of a not null and unique constraints. Primary key uniquely identifies each row in a table. Often it is used with auto increment. There's a foreign key constraint. It prevents actions that would destroy links between tables. Unique constraint ensures that all values in a column are different. Not null constraint ensures that a column cannot have a null value. There's a check constraint ensures that the values in a column satisfy a specific condition, and default constraints sets a default value for a column if no value is specified. The reason we're interested in constraints is that primary key and unique constraint have an implicit index when created, so we don't have to create an index for them. Foreign key constraint, however, is not implicitly indexed, but it is a good idea to create an index for it because it will be used in joins. Let's go to table plus and we can run show index query from travels. And as you can see, there are two indexes there. The primary is ID and the slug. Those indexes were automatically created because we identified ID as a primary key and a slug as a unique columns. Let's go ahead and run show index from tours. And we can see the ID is the primary key and there is an index on a travel ID. This is an index on a foreign key constraint and we created it when we created migration for TORS table. Now let's switch to VS Code. We will continue to work in Travel API DB migration service project and the link to the GitHub repository will be in the description. Let's go ahead and create a migration to add indexes to travels table. We'll do yarn migration create dash dash name add indexes to travels table. All right, and we got a migration created. Let's go to migrations and we have the migration right here. Let's go ahead and delete everything that we have here. And let's go ahead and put the following code in here. So we're gonna do module export the up migration and we're going to create index on the travels table and we use created at because we're using it for sorting we're also using updated at however there's probably 
not gonna, going to be many use cases for that. So we're not going to create an index for that. We can also use fields attribute to specify columns. Uh, this, in this case, we're going to create index on the name column. And as a matter of fact, SQLi's documentation suggests uh, using this way rather than the one that uh, we used above for created at. All right, so the next index we're going to create will be on number of days. And we can also use name attribute to call our index. And we'll be just going to create a custom name for it. So not SQL is going to create it, but we and we'll call it travels number of days IDX. All right, now we're going to create a down migration and we're going to use remove index. And you can see we can either specify columns, right? We'll specify removing index for created at columns or uh, name column or we can actually remove index and specify the name of that index. We can do it both ways. And that's it for the migration. Let's go ahead, save it, and let's go ahead, run it. Let's do yarn migrate. And our migration is successfully created. So let's go ahead and switch to table plus. And we're going to run show index from travels again. And now you can see we have several more indexes. We have travels created at, travels name, and travel number of days index. Let's go back to VS Code and create indexes for tours table. We're going to use yarn migration create name. Uh, we'll be add indexes to tours table. Let's hit enter. And migration got created for us. Let's open that migration, delete the code here. And we're going to put the following code in here. Let's go ahead and do op method. And this method will uh, add index to tours and the column will be named. And we can also use attributes to specify that this index is unique. So the next index we create will be uh, index on price. And finally, we will create a composite index on two columns, starting date and ending date. According to MySQL 8.3 documentation, you can specify up to 16 columns in your composite index. Okay, let's go ahead and create a down function, and we're going to be removing these indexes. And let's go ahead, run yarn migrate. And the indexes are created for tours table. So let's go ahead and switch to table plus and uh, let's run show index from tours. As you can see, we've got our newly created indexes. And what you want to note is that the index on tours starting date, ending date, it is created on two columns and it also have a sequence index right over here. So the starting date comes first and uh, the ending date is second. It actually kind of comes into play when you run some queries. So this cover, uh, composite index can be used, uh, for example, for starting date only, right? So if you put where starting date is and not use the ending date, it will also work. And that's why the sequence in index is important. And this is how you create indexes using SQLize. If you found this video interesting, please give us a thumbs up by hitting that like button. And also, if you would like to get more insights into web development, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.